This month, we celebrate the 100 year anniversary of women's right to vote. But it's important to recognize that during the Women's Suffrage March, the black women who participated were told to march in the back. Women of color couldn't officially cast their ballots until the Voting Rights Act became law in 1965, 45 years later. Without their efforts, we wouldn't be here today. So, let us take this moment on the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment to honor all the women who fought to secure voting rights, and especially those who were not deterred when told to wait their turn. Maude Nathan was a phenomenal woman that stepped out of her domestic role in the late 1800s to speak out and lobby New York legislators to improve labor laws, social justice issues, and women's suffrage. Elizabeth Cady Stanton, a renowned abolitionist and a leader in the women's suffrage movement, along with her colleague Susan B. Anthony, started the National Women's Suffrage Association and presented the 19th Amendment to Congress. Jovita Idar, who was a Mexican-American activist who fought uh, for Latinos, uh, Latino students to have fairness and equity in regards to education and basic rights um, across this country. Truth was a courageous advocate for abolition, temperance, and civil and women's rights. She risked her life working and committing herself to the cause of demanding equal human rights for all women as well as for Black women. But the majority of Black women were unable to fully exercise their right to vote until the passage of the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Lucy Stone was a leading woman in the fight for women's suffrage. She was a persistent force behind the American Women's Suffrage Association and the early feminist women's journal, enacting change through her writings and through her lectures. Ed Tibbles was an indigenous American who pioneered the effort to gain U.S. citizenship for Native Americans and donated her time to work on Native American suffrage. It was Susan B. Anthony who was at the forefront of the women's suffrage movement. Her whole life, she fought for women and their right to vote. She and Elizabeth Cady Stanton and a large group of women were the reason that the 19th Amendment was drafted and handed to members of Congress. Ida B. Wells was a political activist who worked tirelessly towards social reform. While her priorities were advancing Black Americans' fight for equity, she chose to work on passing the law in Illinois that would give white women over the age of 21 partial suffrage until the ratification of the 19th Amendment. Sitka Lashaw was an immense advocate for women's rights and civil rights for Native Americans that worked to address the mistreatment of Native Americans. She became one of the prominent figures that worked to pass the 1924 Indian Citizenship Act, giving Native Americans the right to vote in the United States. Nora Stanton Blash Barney was not only one of the first female civil engineers in America and a skilled architect, but also a devoted suffragist whose professional and political activities built on her family's tradition of women leaders. Alice Paul was a prominent militant leader of the National Woman's Party who chose extravagant protests and militant civil disobedience in an effort to gain women's suffrage. Paul's most notorious work was leading an 18-month picketing of the White House with signs that read, Mr. President, how long must women wait for liberty? She did that to gain the attention of Woodrow Wilson. Fanny Barrier Williams helped found the National League of Colored Women in 1893 and worked on aiding African American women in their plight for suffrage. Jeanette Rankin had a leading role in advocating for women's suffrage in Montana, where she delivered groundbreaking testimonials to the state legislature and then worked hard to pass referendum, making Montana the 10th state to grant women equal voting rights. And in my district, I am blessed to have a constituent, Julie Sass of Elk Grove, who epitomizes what a woman's suffrage, uh, the movement, represents. Julie is a continual advocate. She is in her 80s right now, but she runs circles around people half her age. She's a suffragette. She's a feminist. She's an advocate. She's a mentor. She does it all. Mabel Ping Wah Lee 
was a well-known Chinese advocate for women's suffrage in the United States who courageously led and organized a New York City suffragist parade on horseback. She was a prominent figure who believed suffrage for women was necessary to a successful democracy. Maria Woodhill argued on behalf of the female suffrage in front of the House Judiciary Committee in early 1871, where she was thereafter nominated by the Equal Rights Party to be President of the United States for her oratorical skills. Quincy's own Sarah Atwater Denman. Her commitment to education for women public literacy, health care, and women's suffrage are hallmarks of her legacy to our community and to the entire Western Illinois region. Denman and her husband circulated, signed, and presented a petition supporting the right of women to vote to the Illinois Constitutional Convention of 1869-1870 in Springfield, Illinois. Harriet Tubman, a woman that does not need an introduction. Harriet Tubman is a renowned abolitionist and she was known as the conductor of the Underground Railroad. And even in her later years, she continued to be involved in politics, but she worked hard on in the women's suffrage movement to dismantle the inequitable conditions. Harriet Tubman is a leader for all times. Nina Otero was a New Mexico-based activist who advocated for an inclusive campaign for voting rights. She prioritized making bilingual speeches and publications accessible during the women's suffrage movement for Hispanic women 